This is the 100 Club. I'm Tom, joined by Rich, and it's stupid o'clock in the morning, but we've got a lot of cricket to cover. Uh, three things to do today, Rich. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Tom. Uh, delighted to see Kent win their first ter- trophy in 14 years yesterday. We'll get onto that in a little bit, but a little bit bittersweet because I know how disappointed I would have been had we lost. And so as a Somerset fan, I know how you must be. I know how you must be feeling this morning, but uh, hopefully we can cheer you up a little bit as we go through the uh, the action. Yeah, I mean, you know, as a Somerset fan, I'm pretty comfortable not winning tournaments as well. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to have some therapy for that later. But I thought we'd start today with the return of the big show. Which oh, okay. Today. Go yeah. on, yeah. Chennai and Mumbai later on this afternoon. It is the IPL making its second half of 2021 reappearance. So I thought we just needed to catch up and just see where we were, just in case yeah. we have forgotten. So table-wise, where are we? So we're almost exactly halfway through, a little bit over. I think we have 27 group games left, uh, yeah. plus the four knockouts. Yeah. They're going to be played across Dubai, Sharjah, and Abu Dhabi over the next month. Now, a little bit interesting thing there, because they don't have loads of pitches prepared, and they're going to be using the same stadium for the T20 World Cup. So some questions about pitch use. You know, Will the pitches get a bit lower and slower as the tournament goes on? Yeah. Um, but as you see the table there, you know, Delhi leading the way, will they be able to take that form into the second half? Yeah, so I think, you know, you can't read a huge amount into the table at this point. And I, to be honest, I mean, there's been a number of squad changes as well, understandable, you know, when you have a gap like we had. So I don't think I have a clue who's going to win the second half of this tournament and, and end up on, <laughs> on the finals, unless you want to challenge me with a bold prediction. No, I mean, it's always difficult because it's so so evenly matched in the IPL. I think what I would say is that uh, the top four out of eight will qualify for the Eliminators. Um, yeah. Looking at the table now, I'm thinking... I'm thinking it's sort of, you know, 14 points maybe yeah. could be enough. Um, based on that, you could say everybody's still in it except for the Sunrisers. I don't think the Sunrisers really have a chance to, to get back in. But even the Knight Riders down on, on four points, see if they get on a bit of a tear, could 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 sneak their way in. But I think ultimately it's uh, it's it's Punjab Kings upwards uh, are going to be competing for those those top four sp- slots. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I mean, clearly what we are going to get and always get with the IPL is good quality, you know, top quality cricket and the, the squads are still amazing. You know, just think about this afternoon is MS Dhoni versus Rohit Sharma, uh, along with all the overseas stars, etc. So can't wait to get back into that. And I no doubt we'll be we'll be back with the IPL before too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we have seen as well this uh, past week is the closure of two uh, big uh, short format tournaments. So let's start with the, uh, the the one we mentioned before, the Vitality Blast. Finals yeah. day yesterday at Edgbaston. As always, a riot going on in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but some good cricket as well. Yeah, yeah. The most important thing of the day is that Freddie the Falcon won the mascot race but... <laughs> <laughs> by a no. stretch. By, oh, by an absolute mile. I think they, they yeah. need to do some uh, some checking of the quality of mascot costumes because it's uh, it's becoming a fast Tom, frankly. Clip. Yeah. <laughs> Clip his wings. Um, uh, yeah, three decent games of cricket. I think you could argue. Um, so the first semi-final, Somerset beat Hampshire and the second semi-final, Kent beat Sussex and then Kent and Sussex met, Somerset met in the final with Kent coming out on top. I think you could argue that probably Somerset-Hampshire was the game of the day. It was in terms of sort of neutral spectacle. Uh, as a yeah. as a fan of Somerset, I can't say I was entirely happy all the way through. Let's put it that way. I was on a bit of a roller coaster, and I think we could describe Finals Day yesterday by just showing the text that we were sending each other. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a bit of a roller coaster. Um, I mean, Hampshire got themselves up to 150 uh, all out in the end, mostly thanks to Joe Weatherly, who at 71. A great but goal. It, it was a good knock, but it it didn't look like the kind of the typical road that we're used to uh, at Edge Baston. You know, it looked a bit of a tricky surface. And, and, and Joe Weatherly himself said at the interval that, you know, pace was skidding on, but the cutters were really sort of gripping in the surface and becoming difficult to get away. Yeah, and there's a bit of bounce there occasionally, which was really taking a few uh, by surprise. I, I think even uh, even some of the spinners were getting some quite prodigious bounce. Yeah, and certainly at uh, halfway, I thought so. I thought based on you know, watching that innings, that 150 would be competitive. Um, and when Somerset were 105 for seven, I thought it was very competitive. <laughs> but, uh, but but young Ben Green had a day. Yeah, he did. Tom Abel also, you know, knocking a half century shouldn't be underestimated. You know, just keeping that show on the road, just about. And I think you know before before the game, I 
I'd mentioned that I thought Abel would do something. So I was happy with that prediction. And ultimately, yeah, just uh, Davey bowling well, Ben Green, just getting him over the line at the end. And it was close uh, and a great match. Yeah, and uh, sort of, you know, we always hop back to the 100, but, you know, Catharsis is a London Spirit fan seeing Brad <laughs> Wheel and Chris Wood getting smeared around you know, he was 18 yeah. and 19 and not caring at all. No, I mean, I think if we're really honest, we could say actually the bowling was pretty ordinary in both those games at times. And, uh, you know, it was Hampshire's to lose and they lost it. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's always difficult to criticise individuals because it's difficult performing under pressure. But I think when they go back and look at that, they were missing their lengths. And and, yeah. and, and, and as we'd seen, um, you know, pace off throughout the day seemed to be the way to go. Sort of just yeah. you know, running up and serving it at you know, mid-80s was just disappearing back in. Yeah. Well, talking of pace off, we saw Darren C- Stevens uh, <laughs> coming out for uh, for the second match and bowling pretty well and, you know, ultimately coming out on top. Yeah, I like the pre-match interview with Sam Billings where he said, Adam Mill misses out, so we bring in a like-for-like in Darren <laughs> Stevens. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, only about so, 40 miles an hour difference. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think you know, the key in, in T20 when you are um, when you rely on your top three or four to get you yeah. to a good score is that one of them goes on and and, and really anchors the innings. And it's, it's obviously saying anchor you know, when you're striking 160, but Danny Bell Drummond's 82. Yeah. You know, really set that that game up for Kent. You know, getting 168 against the Sussex side whose strength is in their bowling. Yeah. So I think once once Kent got up to 168, you know, even as a pessimistic as watcher as I am, you know, felt felt relatively comfortable. I think I said to you that I thought Phil Salt would be the X Factor. I think once he went early, it was yeah. always going to be Kent's game to lose in that second semi final. Yeah, it, it was. And I think, you know, Kent deserved the victory. I think Daniel Bell Drummond also took a great catch as well. Um, so, yeah. um, you know, player of, the, player of the match, really, and probably hit the innings of the day in that 80. Yeah, I think so. I think there was a there was a sort of a brief moment when George Garton was going well. He was off to, mm. you, know, you know, Royal Challengers Bangalore in the IPL. Yep. Uh, after the after the game, he was going quite well. He struck forty one, and there was a moment where I sort of looked up and thought, "Oh, hang on a minute, this this could be on." Having seen what Ben Green had done earlier in the day, you know, the next ball he slaps it, you know, absolutely middles it straight to backward point, and at that point, yeah, absolutely game over. So, yeah, relatively comfortable win for Kent in the end, and uh, I think I, I was quite impressed by the way they they came off the field after that game. You know, very, yeah. you know, there, there wasn't overly celebrating; it was very much like half the job done. Absolutely. And why would they? They're all accustomed winners, having been in finals <laughs> so regularly over the last few years. Yeah, they? exactly. So, <laughs> uh, but it set up clearly the, the Kent Somerset game. Um, the the challenge in this one, I think, was probably almost were you going to battle bowl first? And I think that was a decision that the captains hadn't been entirely comfortable with through the day. So were you happy with the, the decision in the end from the yeah, I mean, Kent's modus operandi through the blast has generally been to bat first. But mm. Billings did say earlier in the day that, you know, the, the way to go approach finals day is to you know, bat first in the day and then chase under the lights. Board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And when, when the dew comes down, it can be a little bit tricky for the fielding side, you know, with the wet ball. You know, the ball tends to sort of zip across the outfield a bit quicker. Um, so I think he would have, I think he would have bowled, but I don't think he was overly disappointed to have to bat first. Yeah. And to be fairness, there's a bit more than dew coming down at one point. Um, actually, some fairly heavy showers, but uh, they got um, they got themselves in a position, I think, you know, where uh, it was a defendable total, but actually made it look pretty easy on the chase. Yeah, it was a strange one because in the end, they, they were one run short of what the total they posted against Sussex, you know, where they hit yeah. 168 against Sussex, 167 against Somerset. But it was just completely different innings because... After a reasonable start, you know, Van der Merwe comes on, gets Bell Drummond, then he gets, you know, Denley for a first baller. Yeah. And then Kent sort of lose their way a little bit in the middle overs. You know, Jack Leaning plays a slightly odd knock where he gets 27 off 29. Um, and it's, you know, at 15, 16 over mark, you know, you're thinking like, okay, you know, can they get 140, 145 here? Yeah. You know, then Jordan Cox plays a hand, you know, brilliant knock, explodes. I yeah. think he was 10 off 10, then he gets, you know, 40 odd off his next 14 balls. Including some big sixes of um, Marshall Delanger. I think that goes back to your point. Poorly. I think that goes back to your point earlier about well, one bowling, but also you know, do you look at Lewis Gregory there? You know, yeah. You know, well, fairness to Lewis Gregory, he was never going to bowl yesterday. I meant more as more of his captaincy. Ah, you know, yeah. in terms of who he's using at the back end. You know, did it make yeah. sense? You know, to, to do it that way. Um, but they got themselves up to a d- decent decent score. 
Yeah, I personally would have given Craig Overton his last his last over. Um, he'd, he'd been bowling well all day. But yeah, I agree with that. And uh, you were pe- fairly pessimistic about defending that total, you know, in our conversation. Yeah, I think so because I thought that um, you know, having seen the start in the in the power play, that, that the pitch had quickened up, and you know, as you said, it was drizzling a little bit. It did seem tricky for the bowls. It did seem mm. like a pass score in that final would have been like 180, 190. So I thought Kent were a bit light. But, uh, but and also and also that that <laughs> that game in uh, Canterbury in June when uh, when Kent yeah. got 168 and Somerset knocked it off in 16 overs has I know. obviously scarred me mentally. <laughs> well, Tom Banton <laughs> couldn't repeat his trick of that night, which was a, a, a cracking century. And in fact, you know, as I said to you, the thing you get with the Somerset innings, innings right now, free with every uh, <laughs> ticket, is four Somerset wickets, and it didn't prove any different. And they were quickly behind that chase. They were. I'm gonna. I'm gonna defend Tom Banton a little bit. I think he got a good one in this yeah, one. Yeah, no, he, he, yeah. It was. It was a decent delivery. It gripped. It spun, and it was. It was a smart bit of keeping by Billings. But you're right. Yeah. They, 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 they made themselves a little bit difficult. You know, three for two. But then, you know, Abel and um, Smeed put on a bit of a partnership, and you know, at the end of the power play, it was really sort of level peg level peggings, wasn't it? It, it was. But ultimately, you know. They weren't able to keep that pressure up. The wickets kept falling. And as we know, in T20, wickets actually do make a huge amount of difference to the momentum of the chase. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was, um, you know, four wickets in 21 balls in the middle bit, you know, ultimately decided it. Um, I think I said to you before, you know, having seen Denley grip a few, that I thought Kays Ahmed was going to be absolutely critical. You know, I have checked, you know, Nangaha is, is east of the Medway, so we can comfortably call Kays Ahmed a man of Kent rather than a Kentish man. <laughs> but uh, no, he had a big moment. He got Tom Abel out, who backed so well in that first semi-final, which sort of set set, set the um, the tone. But then but then came one of the strangest moments I think I've ever seen in, in 30 years of watching yeah. cricket. You know, what, what did you make of the... Uh, the non, uh, the non patch, as it were, of Will Smead. Well, it's one of those sort of. If you're talking American football, you, you I suppose we should do, how we much should, control we should, you've we should, got. We should yeah. describe it right for somebody who hasn't yeah. seen it. Yeah. Let's do it. So essentially, Will Smead smashes one to deep square leg. Two fielders converge. Jordan Cox takes the catch a meter inside the rope. Daniel Bell Drummond, running from you know, you know deep fine, can't stop his momentum. Slides. At the same time as he smashes into the boundary, also smashes into Jordan Cox. And the umpires rule that because Bell Drummond is touching the boundary and touching and Cox the and the ball, who's who's holding the ball, therefore it's six. Yeah. I'm not sure I agreed with that, especially at the time. And David Lloyd on commentary, former umpire, didn't. I mean, his idea was once the catch is taken, it's it's dead ball. But you know, six was given. You know, very yeah, strange moment. And in uh, in response to that, then if you take a catch and then sort of fall over the boundary, that's always going to be a six as well. I get that yeah. for me. That's fine. Ultimately, it made for a very strange spectacle, but, <laughs> but very little difference in the terms of the game. It is. So so I think what we're saying is that essentially the boundary rovers are like electricity. You know, as long as there's a fielder... <laughs> touching you know connecting you to the boundary rope that uh yeah. that, that it's out yeah and to be fair to will smith he didn't want it to be a controversial incident so <laughs> two balls later he just spooned one up and yeah. this time cox took the catch now cox was involved in the game again yeah a couple what a of fabulous uh, moment this is yeah an over or two an over later yeah. um just to describe this one the ball smashed out into the leg side again going all the way for six cox i mean we see it quite common now that the, the fielder catches it and then has their momentum is throwing over. Up. Yeah, so oh, then they throw it up yeah. and catch it. But this time, he's in the air. And he yeah. doesn't even catch it. He sort of goalkeeper style just palms it back into play. To it's more, it's more controlled than that, though. He's catching yeah. it and then sort of tossing it very gently, beautifully, straight into the hands of the awaiting partner. Yeah, this is a cricket ball travelling at 100 miles an hour. And he's just sort yeah. of, boom, pop it back. Yeah, in- Incredible moment. And, and I think, you know, you look at that. You know, the billing stumpings, etc. You know, Kent fielded tigerishly, and I think yeah. that that fielding really, really kind of you know was the difference in the end. Good value for the win. Uh, congratulations to Kent. Uh, I don't, I don't think it was that close in the end, to be honest. And um, ultimately, you know, Somerset haven't been in great form. We said it before. I think on the last show, the winner would possibly be the, the winner of the Sussex Kent game, and I think that was going to be the case today. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think so. I think Kent. I think Somerset played played well to to sort of drag themselves into the final. I think while you know 
that middle passage while while Abel or Smead were going. You know, mm. it was the game was a little bit in the balance. But you're right; those those middle order wickets were the key. And I think you know, kudos to Sam Billings a little bit here because I think he did deviate from the plan in the semi final. He used Denley for all four overs. As we said before, you know, the the, the ball was was gripping in the surface. You know, yeah. It seemed yeah. easier when when there was pace on, with the exception of a, I should mention in this in the semi final, brilliant over from Tim R. Mills, you know, yeah. where he picked up two wickets and two balls. But other than that, the the quicks generally seem to struggle. So in the end, he bowled you know Denley four overs. He used Darren Stevens just you know nibbling yeah. it at seventy miles an hour, and I thought it was pretty smart captaincy and just the way he he ran the team in general. And he's he's attracted a bit of criticism over the last kind of couple of years, Sam Billings, yeah. and the amount of time he spends playing franchise cricket around the world and not yeah. necessarily Mostly playing from- county. Yeah, mostly from Kent fans. Mostly, yeah, well, some Kent fans and a minority of Kent fans. I think the majority of Kent fans are hugely appreciative of what he does, and he's a tremendous player and very much looking forward to see how he goes in the in the World Cup in the UAE. Yeah, well, we will get to that in time. But before we uh, sort of close it down for today, we also should mention the closure of the greatest party in cricket, which is the Caribbean <laughs> Premier League. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I, well, just to bring it back to finals day, David okay. Visa turned up sporting a lovely tan. <laughs> he did, <laughs> and he had a good CPL. So you know, all good to all good there. I mean, he had a lovely CPL. Yeah. The uh, the tournament, I watched quite a lot of it. I think it was a you know another great episode. It is not always the most uh, sparkling advertisement in terms of cricketing standards, but yeah. it is fun, and you can't deny that some of the games we had there were excellent culminating in the final last Wednesday, which it was. Uh, we both enjoyed. It was. I, I think we've, we've been Ken and Somerset fans for the best part of 35 years. I'm not sure I've been a St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots fan for 35 days, but <laughs> 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 I hold that victory just as dear as, uh, as, as, as the Kent one yesterday. Uh, well, it was it. good. It was good. Both of our adopted sides in the final. And it was, a. to be fair, it was a cracking game of cricket. It was. Uh the ever popular Raheem Cornwall getting the game <laughs> off to a smashing start. He was. I mean, we, we talked about Roston Chase in our preview show for the IPL yeah. you know, uh, for the um, World Cup. You know, a player that we both enjoy, and you could sense. You know, his game is a lot about hustle. You know, you know running ones and twos. You know, putting pressure on the field, and you could see him getting more and more frustrated as he was batting with <laughs> Raheem Cornwall. But oh, I mean, they did put on a decent time. partnership. Yeah, they did put on forty-four together. You know, Chase made forty-three in the end. Again, they were 128 for six after 18 overs, the St. Lucia Kings. But then Kimo Paul, you know, smashes yeah. five sixes to you know, scores 39, his ever highest ever score in a T20 to get them up to uh, to 159. Which you know, it's a little light, but you know, finals, you know, it's difficult chasing, being with the pressure yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Boston Chase is gonna is a canny old bowler. He's gonna do quite a lot of uh, you know holding work in the second innings. But ultimately, that 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 game comes down to a tremendous innings from one of the players of the tournament, a, a new name on the scene, I suppose, and one we'll be hearing quite a lot about. Yeah, young Dominic Drake's picked up man of the match for uh, you know a blistering forty eight of twenty four balls that yeah. uh, that got the Patriots home. You know, the big names. You know, flattered to deceive. You know, Chris Gale got a duck. Evan Lewis only okay. made six. Yeah. Uh, I don't think um, um, Bravo made many either. You know, he was out, you know, at 95 for five. At that point, they need 65 off the last six. You know, tens, you know, it's reasonable, but, you know, less experienced players. You're down to number seven at that point. Um, but then, you know, they went really hard. I mean, one interesting moment was Keswick Williams bowling a, a wide, so wide, <laughs> it was actually given as a no ball because it didn't yeah. even land on the strip, at which point yeah. then that triggered a free hit, which then went for four. So, I mean, that was quite a crucial moment. Yeah, uh, and it came down to, uh, but he actually bowled quite, quite well. I mean, it came down to needing what was it, uh, eleven off the last over, and um, yeah, it was and a they, reason like. And the, the youngster, sorry, go on. No, carry on. No, I'd say the youngster kept his head, and it, you know, it, it smashed him fairly comfortably. I think what with two balls left was it, or was it on the twentieth ball? Uh, twenty. It was the, over it, itself. It, it, it was the last, last ball. They ball. needed. Last they needed. Fl- but what what they did in that over is they didn't. He didn't lose his head, as you said. He, it was. Yeah. They, but it got down to five or two, and that was the point where he got his ball to hit. It was in the yep. slot, and he played played a genuine cricket shot over yep. extra cover. One bounce ball could have ended it just then, and then they uh, they scrambled one to short fine. Yeah, they scrambled one down to short fine leg for um, so, to win the game. So, so I think that's a- forty eight on his shirt, forty eight on the scorecard. For <laughs> yeah, Don the, yeah, and I think it was nice to see the you know, the St. Kitts guys. You know, win it they hadn't won it before i think they've done a great job hosting the tournament obviously having to do it all on one island rather than you know, the usual travel um 
fantastic for Donovan Miller, you know, the English coach, who's you know, one of their assistants. Hopefully he gets recognised and gets some you know, more work over in uh, English cricket, you know, either in county or franchise. So, uh, yeah, well done to the Patriots. And, yeah, good good fun. Enjoy the CPL. Always. OK, right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to wrap it up soon before the IPL starts. But uh, a couple of other notable uh, bits of cricket going on this week in the women's game. Clearly, the first uh, one-day international between England and New Zealand. Uh, a good quality game again. Indeed. Um, England posting 241. You know, the Kiwis... Uh, ended up on 211 in the end, um, mostly thanks to Amy Satellite's 79. A, sl- a slow start. You know, Catherine pr- pulled four consecutive maidens in that response. Yeah. And that 241 was really built off the back of two partnerships. Uh, you know, Tammy Beaumont and Heather Knight put on 65 together, and then Catherine Brunt and Heather Knight put on uh, 88. You know, other than that, not many people got going. Um, yeah. Not many batters got going. So, uh, you know, Heather Knight said, oh, at the midway, you know, we talked about, you know, posting you know scores on tricky wickets i think 241 was that so yeah. we'll, we'll see how the it's a five match series england one up um charlie dean made her debut you know she bought you know, one for 53 well. yeah she t- touched That's on the expensive right. side but she was bowling at that point when new zealand were trying to up the ante and um, yeah. you know, lauren winfield hill you know passed a thousand runs in odi cricket so you know, kudos to her Absolutely. I think that was a victory for experience in that particular game where the uh, the, 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 the classy old acts came out. I shouldn't call them old. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, ca- had... captain's, captain's not from Heather Knight. So be, yeah. it's well set up. Those are two two quite well matched sides. I mean, obviously the Kiwis are missing Amelia Kerr a little bit, but um, no, I think it should be, should be a good series. And the second match her. later today, yeah. Yep, and we also had the last round of the Rachel Ho Ho Flint uh, Trophy, which ex- featured a particularly extraordinary innings from s- someone who we've had on the show, right? Indeed. Uh, well, actually, quite a few of our interviewees performed yeah. well yesterday. Well, I so thought Danny Light- Gregory took two. She did indeed. The Lightning, uh, the, the Loughborough Lightning, they beat the Sparks by twenty-four runs. The Sparks mm-hmm. still qualified for the uh, the, the Eliminator. Uh, Lightning missed out in fourth place, but yeah, Catherine Bryce career best one hundred and sixty-two. You know, 21 fours and two sixes. She put on 207 with her sister Sarah for the second wicket. So that was pretty impressive. Couldn't get uh, a knock for the Trent Rockets, though. <laughs> no, you know, bang at nine or whatever it was. Um, <laughs> similarly, uh, Welsh Fire Sophie Luff, uh, yeah. she hit 157 for the Western Storm as they you know, posted 313, beating the Sunrises by 36 runs. Uh, yeah. Lauren Bell uh, of the Vipers, she uh, gave up a miserly 29 runs off her 10 overs as the Vipers uh, beat the Diamonds by five wickets and they topped the group. So they're going straight into the final. Yeah, so um, just run us through the uh, the finals lineup again, please. So the finals lineup will be the Sparks will play the Diamonds. So that, okay. that Vipers-Diamonds game you know, was almost like a, you know, to decide who goes straight to the final. So in the end, the Vipers topped the group. They're straight into the final next week. Midweek, the Diamonds will play the Sparks for the other spot in the final. The last game, which didn't really matter in terms of you know, qualification, was the uh, the Thunder beating the Southeast Stars by fifty five runs in a in a low scoring game. You know, Hannah Jones took you know five wickets in that one. And uh, talking about miserly bowling, Alex Hartley um, two for seventeen off ten overs. You know, economy rate of one point seven. So yeah, very nice. well done her. And uh, yeah, the final next weekend. So should be good. We'll see. We'll see who uh, see who turns up in that one. Good stuff. Right. So that is our world of white ball, which another week, yeah. but IPL coming up, right? So um, that is going to lead us almost exactly onto the nose of the World Cup. Is there anyone that you are looking forward to seeing in the IPL who could yet claim a place in the World Cup through an injury replacement? Who's the one player that we should be watching in the IPL? So I suppose maybe, uh, um, I'm not sure. I, I, if we were to maybe think about the South Africans, you know, Faf du Plessis yeah. is ranked number three at the minute. Yeah. Um, and in the batting charts, he's got 320 runs. Shikhar Darwin is leading. You know, he was a lot dropped yeah. out of the, the squad. Um, I guess we've got you know, a couple of Indian bowlers in uh, Harsh Patel and Avesh Khan. They're leading the wickets at the minute. You know, they're not in the squad, both uncapped. So, you know, perhaps those are the players who are most likely to put their hands up, you know, given they're leading. From a sort of you know English perspective, I'm interested to see how George Garton goes because he yeah. had a good day yesterday. You know, a lot of talent. I wonder if he gets a game for RCB. Maybe at the latter end if they're not in the uh, if they're not competing. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether see how he goes. I agree with all those. Might add Washington's and maybe some Natarajan as well. But uh, some good stuff there. And of course, I, 
Um, Adam Mill at Mumbai Indians, currently an injury cover for the Kiwis, but uh, awesome. I've got sneaky. I've got a sneaky suspicion he gets in. Yeah, good, Rich. Tremendous as always. Thank you very much for joining me, and uh, we'll catch you here next time. What's that? I need. What's, I, what's you got there? I need a new mug. Two thousand and seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be getting, I'll be logging into the club shop as soon uh, as I finish talking to you. I assume they're already on sale. Give it two give, weeks, they'll be on sale in the, the local charity shop, I'm sure. We'll give it, given it's Kent, it'll probably be two years. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous stuff. Catch you next time on The 100. Cheers. Bye.